Well, you're still on to the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Uh, we're looking at the first major conversation here and the challenges of our democracy. Well, Nigeria's, Nigeria officially became a democracy in October 1960 when she gained independence from Britain. So far, it's been 23 years of uninterrupted democracy. But political pundits say that Nigeria's democracy has been fragile and fluctuating since independence. Now, in a recent event, a former president, Goodluck Jonathan, said Nigeria is gradually uh, moving towards dictatorship. He said looking at the states and so on were derailing towards the quasi-fascist form of government. But democracy is not only about winning elections alone, it's about accommodation. This is his thoughts. Also, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, during the MBA conference described our democracy as plutocracy, a civilian regime far from democracy. In the same vein, you also have Professor Wole Shoinka, who says our democracy has been desecrated and replaced with dynastic rule through the back door. 23 years after the return to civil rule, what are the issues? We have Dele Farotimi, a lawyer and a political activist right here in Lagos. He joins the conversation. Dele, thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Let's start off with, uh, let's go straight to the crux of the conversation. What are your thoughts on, you know, the concerns that have been raised by stakeholders. I mean, you look at a former president of Nigeria. Uh, you also mm. look at uh, Professor Willie Shoinka, and you look at the likes of uh, uh, all the, all the stakeholders that have raised your concern. Yeah, uh, well, um, <laughs> a lot of time people play catch up. And I must say that practically all the gentlemen that you have referenced we're merely playing catch up. Um, a doctor in my in one of my books, I call it "Laugh Through the Tears," and I was speaking specifically to General Buhari's second term. He, Nigeria has already entered a fascist state in its democratic work, and that democracy, put it in quotation. Um, I better describe it as democracy because ordinarily when you talk to a democracy, you will be speaking to the capacity of citizens to elect those who should govern them. The Nigerian has really ever been treated as a citizen, particularly since we lost what I will call democracy in 1966 which was essentially the last time the Nigerian had the right to self-determination. So it's been one form of lie pretending to be a democracy, and you actually have to embrace that lie before you call the Nigerian a citizen. So yeah, it is only in fascist states that you have the kind of things that would happen in Zaria, at least in Kaduna State, where the army paid for with citizens' taxes, would kill citizens. I think it was 430 that the judicial panel of inquiry in Kaduna confirmed death because a chief of army staff, Buratai, had his, had his convoy disturbed. So 430 Nigerians, by government own account, were murdered. October 2020, Nigerians, in unknown numbers up till date, peaceful protesters waving flags were murdered at the toll gate and state apparatus was deployed to cover what happened. A governor came on here to lie blatantly about what transpired. The Nigerian army refused to submit to the jurisdiction of the judicial panel of inquiry and we are talking about a democracy. Nigeria is already a fascist state pretending to be a democracy. Now, um, I believe it was Falano that spoke to Nigeria democracy becoming a plutocracy. 
It didn't become a plutocracy only recently. It's been like that for a while. But for you to see just how bad the situation is, you have to look to the elections, particularly in Ekiti and on those states. On those states, more tragic because you have an SAN as the governor. There was an SAN contesting against him. And yet, they coined the phrase, the Bosebe. Mm. So it is not today that Nigeria became a plutocracy. It's a gradual descent into the mess that we are in, but it's been on for a while. And then Professor Shoyinka spoke to the erection of family monarchy. Look, we know, and it is a notorious fact, that every governor becomes interested in who succeeds him. And the state we live in, Lagos State, is particularly notorious for this anomaly. You today have a situation where we can speak legitimately and creditably to the erection of an hegemony that has lasted the last 23 years, where one man determined who his successors would be and enforces his will by a mixture of money, force, anything it takes to enforce his will a man has effectively captured the state. So when you speak to the erection of monarchies, each and every one of these things that these eminent men have spoken to are staring us in the face on a daily basis. These are nothing new. It just so happens that all of a sudden, we are speaking to it as though it is something new. It's nothing new. All these are already with us. All right, but if all this is already with us, I mean, um, over time, uh, some persons have questioned whether or not Nigeria is a democracy, which is still part of the issue that we're mm. trying to consider what are the challenges and what exactly is wrong with us. But, you know, some people would say that uh, the, the Nigerian democracy have actually suffered, you know, from uh, the military, I mean, the civil war and uh, the dominance of the military era. So I'd like to ask you, do you think that uh, the democracy challenge or the challenges of our democracy is a fundamental issue in the sense that we didn't get it from the inception correctly? Or it's, uh, you know, uh, a trickle down from the civil war and the military era that has constantly, you know, crippled it and made it very fragile? Well, um, I am a lawyer by training. But I have also hung around construction engineers. And I know that the type of building you seek to erect mm -hmm. would determine the kind of foundation that you will be. And uh, my people have a proverb. I think it is sourcing in this situation. They say, You say to the cripple that the load on your head is lopsided. So he says to you, why are you talking about the load on my head? Why don't you focus on my legs, which are already lopsided from the beginning? I've been issued. Our problems are many, but one of the biggest of our problems is our fascination with using words that do not mean what the original coiners of the world intended for it. In every democracy, the most important of the ingredients is the right to self-determination. In a country, that right to self-determination begins with the capacity to make your own constitution, which tells you how you want to be governed. I imagine that there will be a broadcaster guild association or a new